All right, we are live here on Smarter San Diego Facebook. Uh, got a lot to talk about here regarding the VA home loan benefit, how and why um, to use it. These are both two important things to understand. Um, I have a, a special guest. Before I get to introduce my special guest, let me put the information up on the screen. Here it is. NMLS number, uh, Derek Evans here, obviously I'm a licensed loan officer. Um, and uh, I want to help you understand the important things to know about the VA home loan benefit. Um, I also have a special guest joining us today, as I am my own producer as well. Sarah Halliburton's here. What's up, Sarah? Hey, Derek. How there, are you? There she is. All right. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so Sarah, you know, today this is obviously an important deal um, because a lot of people are unaware. I'm not sure if you know the statistics on this, but I'll drop it on you real quick. Um, only about 15% of people who are eligible for the VA home loan benefit actually use it, if you can believe that. I can believe it, and I tell my clients all the time, I've actually had clients come to me to purchase their second home, and they were actually advised not to use their VA loan by their previous realtor, which is crazy to me, given the amazing benefits that the VA loan has. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that today, and I want to go into some great detail because uh, <clears throat> this is a time, an interesting time, where people can take advantage of it probably more so than usual. But forever, the VA Home Loan Benefit has been here forever. I actually have a client right now who used the VA Home Loan Benefit for the first time 45 years ago. So it's something that's been around for a long time. It's become streamlined. It's better now than it, than it was in the past. But let's first of all, when we start talking about why the VA home loan, before we get to the why, the VA loan versus other loans, I think it's important for us to cover why real estate. Why should I be even looking to buy a home? Fortunately, I have all this stuff summarized very nice and simply. Now, the main thing I think that causes people to, to look at buying real estate is when they see how much money they're throwing away on rent. And that's why I want you to understand the first premise here is your primary residence is really a hedge. And I'm going to explain to you what that is because I want you to be savvy about real estate. I don't want you to just go out there and blindly buy it and not know why you're buying it. You need to know why you're doing things and understand it so that you can make the right decisions and you don't do something silly. So <clears throat> the reason it's a hedge is because what you're doing is you are hedging your bets. You're hedging your costs. You're fixing in your costs. Let's take a look at graphic number four. This is average rental rates. Now this is just as of March, 2018. So this is two years old, but what you can see here, and I'm gonna draw it for you, the trend in rents, all right, is dramatically higher. Now if we actually look from March 18 to today, it would even get more, um, I guess you would call that deep, more steep um, in the curve for rents because we were saying at this point in time now this this is always based on two bedrooms you know so 1887 most people who are renting out there are like I'm not paying 1887 a month for rent I'm paying way more than that um, and that's because this has gotten even more steep but the point is the thing that I want you to understand is that when when you purchase a home what you're doing is you're hedging because when you buy a house your payment is the same so when you buy a house your payment looks like this you know it's pretty much a straight line across so you're, you're, keep, you're protecting yourself from these crazy raises in rent and prices. And then what's really cool about buying a house is that one day as you get far, far enough along down this line, boom, your payment drops to zero because you have a paid off house. Remember, that's the goal, okay? That's never gonna happen with rent. It's never gonna happen. If you want to have a zero dollar housing payment someday in your future, you have to own real estate. That is the only way to get it. So <clears throat> when we look at this, when we understand that buying a primary residence is a hedge first, there's three things that come along with home ownership that are crucial to understand. Number one, you get tax advantages. Now talk to your CPA. I'm not a CPA. Sarah's not a CPA. Uh, but if you're getting tax advantages, it means you're able to itemize your deductions. When you pay interest on a mortgage, that interest is tax deductible. Some people have asked me recently, well, didn't they make changes to the law? Didn't Trump change it so you can't get that? only for people who have mortgages over $750,000 if they are a single individual or over a million dollars if they're a married couple. So for the vast majority of people, even in a high cost area like San Diego, it doesn't apply. And even if you do have a mortgage over those amounts, you still get to write off the interest up to those amounts. So yes, there's a huge tax advantage. Also, every payment you're making, you're paying down principal, which is huge. And you also have the opportunity for appreciation. All three of those things are things that you do not get when you rent. 
So if you want those things, when you rent, literally all three of those are zero. They're all a zero when you rent. All three of these, when you rent, it's a zero dollars. But you have the opportunity to gain on all of these three fronts when you own. So that's the, re the so hedging our bets, right? Hedging our costs. And when you look at this, and Sarah, I want to talk about this because when we, we get to the BAH piece, when you talk about tax advantages, it's one of the most amazing situations that truly exists in all of personal finance in all of the country. There are a couple of things that are really, really crazy. And one of them is the fact that people who are getting BAH or basic allowance for housing who have the chance to buy a home, you know that when you get that money, it's tax free. You're not taxed on that. But then if you go and you buy a house with it, you're actually able to write off a big portion of what you pay for that house against your taxable then income. So for someone who is renting for you know twenty five hundred a month, let's say, let's put this let's put these numbers on paper. If it's twenty five hundred a month, okay, that's thirty thousand dollars a year. If you're here for three years, that's ninety grand. So if you decide to just rent, and I'm using round numbers, some people have less BAH than twenty five hundred, some people have more, but it's just for a round number's sake. That's ninety grand, Sarah, while you're here. Ninety thousand dollars that you're for sure gonna lose if you rent. So yeah, you're giving it to your landlord, paying their mortgage. You're paying someone's mortgage, one way or the other. So if you want to give away the ninety grand, that's cool. It's, it's your call. I don't recommend it, but you can do it. Now, if you want to invest it, when you buy a home, you have all the three things that we just talked about. I'll go back to that slide. Tax advantage, principal pay down, appreciation opportunity. But also, if you're active duty and you have BAH, you get the ultimate tax advantage because they're giving you money tax-free that you can then use to buy a home and get all of these things with. And you'll get to take the, the interest that you pay on that home and write it against your taxable income and reduce the amount of taxes you pay dramatically. So uh, investment property is also something that a lot of people you know, are interested in when it comes to real estate. You can buy homes with your VA home loan benefit and turn them into investment properties. It's totally okay to do that. Um, but you know, the, the main thing also here is with the macro implications, this is something I want people to understand because why real estate? If you're really wanting to know why real estate, you have to understand that there's only so much of it, yet we have an, a parabolically growing population. So the population is growing in a parabolic fashion, but the amount of real estate that's available here on Earth is obviously limited. It's finite, there's only so much of it. So when you have a situation where there's a limited amount of supply of anything and a exponentially growing demand, then you're going to be in a situation where prices will go higher. And that's why we've seen since the beginning of real estate since the beginning of people claiming ground and saying this is mine right here there's been wars fought for this stuff i mean over and over and over and over it has been the most valuable thing because of the macro implications so i think that's super crucial to understand derek real quick can yeah. we touch base back on the investment property too if yeah i have a va loan could i buy something bigger than a single family. I get this question a lot, and I think most people think that they can only buy, you know, a single family home, that they cannot buy a duplex, triplex, fourplex, or something along those lines, but uh, as a VA lender, it, is that true? I mean, I know the answer, but I'd like you to share kind of what, how that looks. I have a slide for that, so... <laughs> Uh, I'm so, jumping the gun. All right, but, no, it's okay. It. No, it's all good. It's there. It's there. So buying multi-unit is 100% doable. In fact, I have several people in escrow right now um, who are using their VA home loan benefit to buy multi-unit properties. And this is 100%. You, could, you still need to occupy or intend to occupy is the, is the verbiage on the affidavit you're going to sign at closing. Intend to occupy this property as my primary residence. <clears throat> and the expectation is that that would be for a year. Um, but uh, you absolutely can buy multi-units. So this is a humongous advantage <clears throat> if you think about this, because if I'm buying a, you know, a, a multi-unit property, which I can turn into an investment property, let's call it within a year, I can legitimately 100% turn this four unit property that I'm buying with my VA home loan benefit with no money down, okay? And we'll, we'll get to some of the, the VA benefits, uh, VA loan benefits here in a second, but I'm buying this with no money down 
and I can have rental income. I can have multiple years. I can have a great investment property for essentially, I could even have no money out of pocket. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely nuts what is possible with this. So let's do that. Let's segue right over to, <clears throat> I call it the VA loan pros and cons, Sarah, because there's only one con. There's a lot of pros. So let's get that con out of the way. It's the VA. Yeah, what is it? It's it's the funding fee. Okay, let's let's talk about it because the VA funding fee is the only thing that people like. You'll hear some some VA haters out there like Dave Ramsey saying yeah, that funding fee is so expensive. That's crazy. Um, but you got to understand that that's the reason that why you're able to buy 100% financing. You know, you're, that's the reason why <clears throat> you get lower rates. A lot of people don't know this, but the VA loan has lower rates by about half a percent over conventional financing. And the reason is because the VA guarantees 25% of that loan. So on the secondary market, the exposure for investors is only 75% of the loan amount, which is a very safe bet for them. And therefore, the prices on that paper goes higher and the, the note rates go lower. So you get lower rates with the VA home loan and you always will because the VA covers it and they cover it using the funds that they um, generate through the VA funding fee. Now, not everyone has to pay the VA funding fee. So if you have any disability rating <clears throat> whatsoever, and it doesn't matter what the percentage is, if you have any, you do not pay the VA funding fee. So, Derek, real quick on yeah. this, because um, this question comes up a lot with my VA borrowers. Now, I have some people that say, Oh, I heard it have to be ten percent. I and then I had a lender once tell me it didn't matter as long as you applied and you had a zero percent rating that you still qualified. What is the true percentage? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's any. You just have to have a disability rating of any kind. So any service related disability that's recognized by the VA will allow you to get the funding fee waived, and it's very easy to do. If you're in that situation, it's one piece of paper that we need, and we can confirm this for you. So um, it is not a difficult thing to do if you have that um, and you're looking to utilize this. <clears throat> not a problem. Very easy to do. I think the the thing that is probably the hottest topic that I want to talk about here at number three on the screen is no money needed to close. And this is something where I wanted to to have you discuss this, Sarah, because ultimately this your agent who really there's two ways that you can get your closing cost paid for. Because you can borrow hundred percent and you can borrow the money for the VA funding fee if you need if uh, if it applies to you, all within the VA home loan. But you still have when you're buying a home, you still have closing costs. And just to, in in general, a general rule of thumb is that if you're buying a five hundred thousand dollar house, your out of pocket is going to be about eight thousand. Now it could be, you know, plus or minus, you know, a certain amount, uh, but that's really a, a good gauge. Normally, what you're going to need to set up your impounds and pay for your side of the closing costs. Um, so, for most people, are like, well, man, if I could get away without without having to come up with, you know, seven or eight thousand bucks, that'd be great. And you can do that. And Sarah, what's the what's the, how do you make that happen? You know, from the real estate side of things. So, Derek, we actually just did this on a deal that we closed yesterday. Um, my borrowers were VA borrowers, and um, we found a house. It actually had multiple offers on it. And, you know, we went in and we submitted a, a pretty strong offer. Uh, and we had requested that the seller give us $5,000 in closing costs, and we added it into the purchase price. And then uh, the lender that they went with actually gave them some closing cost money as well. Um, we had a couple repair items that, w that came up throughout the transaction, and they asked for a credit on that. Uh, so at the bottom line, once we closed, uh, instead of them having to come in, you know, like you said, the, the eight to 10000 to close, uh, they actually came back and got money back from the transaction because the money that we had negotiated for the closing cost actually surpassed the amount due. So when we closed, they actually received $3,000 plus dollars back. Um, from the company, which included their earnest money deposit, they had put down some money uh, just to show a good faith deposit, and they got that back, plus some additional funds from both the lender and the listing side, which was really helpful to them. Um, you know, they had some savings, but they really didn't want to spend it, and uh, they had some family things coming up, and so it was really nice that we were able to negotiate that for them, and some people say, well, you know, our seller is going to correspond to an offer that has a closing cost request 
and we were up against five other offers, and we were able to get it. You know, we wrote a letter of the heart to the seller. We did a video. It, they happen to be military, too, and we're really sensitive to that for my clients. And uh, it is very possible. So they came out of the transaction with literally zero money. They didn't have to come out of pocket for their appraisal. The only thing that they came out of pocket for was their home inspection. And once they got those money from the closing costs and the, the credit, they were actually in the green, which was really nice for them to, to move into their new home with some extra money in their pocket. Yeah, so that's, you know, you make a good point that there's two ways so that you can make this happen. Um, if you're in a super hyper competitive scenario, which, um, which does happen, uh, especially, you know, in the San Diego marketplace, then you can either get closing costs concessed or, you know, closing uh, seller concessions um, from the owner of the property, or you can get a lender credit. Now, to get a lender credit, what you need to do is just take a slightly higher interest rate. I have a good example of that closing here soon, uh, where we have uh, two, you know, um, both the spouses are um, veterans, and, you know, they are both 100% disabled. And um, so they're on fixed incomes, and coming out of pocket with, uh, with closing costs was very difficult. And ultimately, what we were able to do was just give them a slightly higher rate. So they took a three and a quarter which, you know, rates were lower on that day than, than that when we locked. But it's still a very low rate. We were able to get them $8,500, and it's going to cover everything. So, you know, that is the other option on that. Now, with the VA home loan, you never have mortgage insurance. So I want to make sure people know this because with most loans you do, especially with no money down. I mean, if you don't put 20% down, you're going to pay mortgage insurance with a conventional loan. And it doesn't matter how much you put down unless it's a 15 year amortization, you're not going, you're going to have to pay mortgage insurance with an FHA loan. So this is a humongous advantage, especially when we were talking about multi-unit properties, because typically if you're going to buy, you know, an investment property with a conventional loan, you need 25% down. Well, here you get the benefit of putting 20% down and no mortgage insurance without having to do it. It's just such a drastic advantage because the mortgage insurance does nothing for you. Mortgage insurance, is insurance for the bank. It's not for you. It doesn't insure you anything. It just allows them to give you the loan. It's a rite of passage because they need to be covered up to a certain point and that insurance covers them up to a certain point in a worst case scenario, if you foreclose or whatever it may be. So it, the, the mortgage insurance doesn't, but doesn't help you other than just to obtain the loan. So you wouldn't be able to get that loan if it wasn't for the mortgage insurance, but it doesn't do anything beyond that. So when you're paying that money out every month, it's just kind of a lost cause. So what we're, what we're trying to do here is show how powerful the pros are here with the VA home loan benefit. Also, qualification is much easier, much, much easier to qualify. Um, and by the way, also, you can have more than one VA loan. And a lot of people don't realize that. They bought a house when they were stationed in Virginia or you know Texas or whatever it may be. Um, and so they're like, yeah, I turned it into an investment property, but I got my VA you know, entitlement tied up there. Not necessarily true. You will still have some left for sure. And you know, now if you've bought one house here in San Diego, you probably won't have much entitlement left, if any, because you know the amounts are higher. But when you buy a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house in Virginia, you got a lot of entitlement left. And you might be able to still buy another home using just the VA home loan benefit and get hundred percent financing. It's possible. That's something I have to look up for you, but it's doable. So <clears throat> when we look at why the VA home loan? We, we, we have to start with why real estate, which is the first thing we covered. Uh, we have to look at, you know, what is, are the benefits here? And we have to also look at the con, the VA funding, if we have to make sure that you understand what that is. And if you're paying a VA funding fee, I want you to understand something. It's a very, it's a noble thing to do. It really is because what you're doing is you're allowing other people to, you're allowing the VA home loan benefit to exist. That VA funding fee is what allows the VA home loan benefit to exist. That's what funds everything. So just know that you're helping your fellow, your brothers and sisters in service by you know paying that fee, which is financed in the loan. So you know when it comes down to it, ultimately, if it weren't for people paying for the VA funding, you wouldn't have the VA home loan benefit. It would have to get financed some other way. They would have to have mortgage insurance. They'd have to have all these things. So in order to have all those benefits, that has to exist. Um, so one thing, though, Sarah, that we should cover as well with the VA home loan benefit is that it does not um, necessarily work on every single property. 
So you have to sort of, you kind of have to keep that in mind when you're looking at properties. If it's a detached home, more than likely you're good. Uh, but if it's an attached home, like a condo, that's something that you'll have to uh, take a look at. Correct, Derek. And, you know, the, the borrowers should really look at it, or the buyers should really look at it, that the VA wants to make sure that you're buying something that's worth buying, right? The VA really sure. wants to make sure that you're not buying something that could potentially cause some kind of financial hardship or something that um, wouldn't be desirable later on. So for detached homes, like you said, most of the time you're right. You know, they won't allow you to purchase something that's a fixer or something that needs major work like foundation issues or anything along those lines. However, uh, when it comes to condos, what they're really looking for is how is the HOA protecting uh, the buyer. So, it, for instance, you know, they want to make sure that the HOA isn't in any sort of litigation or, or law issue. They want to make sure that one owner doesn't own more of the units than the other entity. So, for instance, you can't have one investor that owns 10 units out of 15 because that may change the way that the HOA functions and the way that the monies are, are distributed towards the units. And so, really, it's the VA that's looking out for you and making sure that what you're buying is something that is – it makes sense, and it's something that's not going to, you know, cause a, a later down the line financial issue for you. And so there are certain condos that are VA approved. I believe, Derek, you can look them up for them as we're looking at property. Yep. Um, and I and just because it's not VA approved now uh, doesn't mean that it can't be, right, Derek? Because uh, True. from my experience, we've actually been able to get a couple – different condos uh VA approved in the in the course of my career and most of the time they were just never applied for that certificate that yep. specific development just never applied for it so uh it's not a no right off the bat if it's not been VA approved we can definitely work on getting it VA approved if that's the one but for the most part those would be the reasons yeah, and I think you're right, and it's you also have to take a temperature of the marketplace. You know, how much time do you have? Is this a really hot property? Is it going to move quickly? Um, and, and kind of keep those things in, in mind. Um, when we're in multiple offer situations, as we mentioned earlier, we're talking about concessions. In those multiple offer situations, you have to keep all those things in mind. Okay, well, hey, you know, the, for example, the example I gave where we were able to help cover closing costs with the lender credit, there was absolutely no way that they would do concessions. And fortunately, I knew the listing agent, which is super helpful, and he told me as much. They're not going to go for concessions. So um, we said, okay, well, then this is how we need to structure it. So all these things, so much more is possible than I think that most people realize. Um, and when you look at and understand all those different possibilities, you start to go, wow, okay, I didn't realize all this was at my fingertips. And that's really what we wanted to discuss today. And there is one more thing, too, uh, with the VA Home Loan Benefit that I would like people to know, and that is the opportunity. And I say leverage opportunity because there's – you know, we talk about hedging, we talk about paying off your home, and that's really should be your ultimate goal. Because every, if you p just pay off your home and you do nothing else, you don't save any money or, or have any 401k or anything, you just buy a home and you pay it off, you're going to be okay. And that's the reason why I, you know, I, I urge that. And there's a strong correlation between paying off a home and retirement. And I can give you those numbers at another date, but I have the data and it shows and it's clear. People who paid off homes retire. Okay, and so paying off home is great. Now, if you see an opportunity and you need to leverage your home, there's no better vehicle than the VA Home Loan Benefit. You can do 100% cash out, to, which will allow. So, if you bought a home, you know, for 450,000, let's say seven or eight years ago, and now it's worth 600,000, you could actually borrow um, at today's low rates, and you could take cash out against that property up to 100% to do whatever you want with, obviously, but do something smart if you're gonna do that. Don't blow it, you know? Don't take it and go buy a boat. Don't take it and go buy your dream car. That's not the idea here, okay? I, I get it, that's what a lot of people want to do. Please don't do that. If you're gonna do it, make sure you're using it to diversify your investments, you know, to say, okay, hey, you know what? I've got, we're totally invested in this house. We're gonna be here forever, it's our forever home, but I see an opportunity to do something over here. I see an opportunity to buy a rental property over there. I see an opportunity to, you know, buy this stock or whatever, but just make sure you're doing something to diversify your investments, whether it's more property or something else, it's totally fine. And consolidating debt is totally okay. And then that's what a lot of people will do with it, paying off student loans or whatever it may be. Uh, before you consolidate any student loans, though, you have to make sure that you've checked 
with the income-based repayment plans that are possible because there are benefits as well for veterans um, when you consolidate student loans. So before you do that, check with me and let's make sure that that's the best route. But if you consolidate debt, it's okay. We just have to be careful that it's not a habit. You know, we don't want you to create a bad habit of, well, let's just, you know, we can keep putting it on the credit cards, you know, we'll refi the house and we'll pay it off if we have to. Terrible idea, not something you should do. But if you've gotten yourself into a debt situation, which can be caused by many, many different things, and you happen to have equity in your home, then this is an opportunity to potentially take advantage of that using the VA home loan benefit. Keep in mind, the rates are a little higher when you do this, cash 100% cash out. If you go above 90%, the rates go up. Uh, so you're not getting the normal VA rate on that day. You're getting the VA rate plus 100 basis points. Um, so that's just something to know. You know That could mean a, a quarter to a half a percent higher in interest rate, but you can Earl, um, which is the, I always say, remember Uncle Earl, interest rate reduction refinance loan. Uncle Earl wants to save you money. So that's the way to remember what an Earl is. And 210 days after you close any VA loan, you can Earl or essentially refinance it at the current going rates. Um, I think people should know this because there literally is no other program like this in existence. It doesn't exist. It did a long time ago, you know, in, in before the crash and some of the different markets, some terrible loans, just some bad stuff. This is a program that no longer exists except for through the VA home loan benefit. So for people who want this opportunity, you really you have to have you know, VA eligibility to do something like this. So if it's something that you can use to your financial advantage, then terrific, terrific. Let's just make sure we're doing it smart. I don't wanna send people out there to get cash out to go do something risky. Or you know, someone asked me recently, should we, we use this cash out opportunity to pay for our wedding? And you know, my suggestion is always gonna to be to have the least expensive wedding that you can. Have the most fun that you can that day. And a lot of times, you know, having the most fun means spending less money because the more money you spend, the more stressed out you're gonna be. And um, if you're taking all the equity out of your home to pay for you know, that, that wedding, that's something that one day you'll go, we probably could have got away with doing a lot less than that and be in a better financial position and you'll probably be right. So just make sure that it makes sense to do that um, if, if you're going to look at something like that. Sarah, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, yeah. Well, just, just to that point, you know, I think it's important that people realize that your house is not a credit card, like you said, you know, just making really smart decisions on that cash out. And I think that that's kind of what a lot of homeowners learned uh, when we had that great housing market crash is uh, a lot of people had done that. So I feel like we have a smarter, um, you know, home bon homeowner now uh, and like you said, you know, just make sure that you're buying appreciating assets, not depreciating assets. And, and I think I think you hit it right on the head on, on that. Awesome, awesome. Well, Sarah, thank you so much uh, for your time today. I uh, really appreciate you jumping on here with me on a Saturday night. Uh, we both have kids and stuff going on, so um, it, it's great for you to do this. We're just trying to take um, advantage of the marketplace. What the opportunities in the marketplace show people where the opportunities are in this marketplace. And if you're a VA eligible home buyer or homeowner, there are opportunities that we wanna make sure that you're aware of. Of course, we want you to do everything in a very savvy way. We want you to make savvy decisions here. No, nothing knee jerk, no emotional stuff. Let's make smart decisions. And if you have all the information, it is easier to make a smart decision. So I appreciate you contributing tonight, Sarah. Yeah, thanks so much, Derek. And like you said, I really do believe that our VA buyers are the ones that are going to be able to reap the most benefits in this market just because of the, the amazing benefits that they have at their disposal. 100%. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's great to speak with you, and I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Thanks, Derek. All right. I really appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. All right, that's Sarah Halliburton, uh, Halliburton Homes. Her information has been on the screen there, of course. If you have questions, you can contact her. And I just want to uh, kind of finish up here by letting everybody know that the market is always changing and there's always new opportunities. Um, so if you have a question about it, feel free to reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. I wanna help people take advantage of opportunities that the market presents. And the market will present opportunities always, no matter what's going on, no matter what you see, even if we go back to the crash. During the crash, there were lots of opportunities, lots of opportunities. Um, in the current market that we're in right now, there are lots of opportunities. Whatever market we're in, when you watch this video, there will be lots of opportunities. Um, you just have to know a little bit about what's going on, which is where I can help you with, and then also know about what you want. So if we can establish those two things, 
we can help you figure out how you can maximize your opportunity in any given marketplace. So my information is on the screen if you have questions. Um, and I'll be happy to help you anytime. Thank you for watching. Please share this with your friends. Let's help make them smarter.